I was just an insecure, scared kid. And the only way I could find myself was to put myself through the worst thing possible. I'm going to say the exact opposite of what the world, today's world is saying. So we read a bunch of books nowadays. As, as humans, we, we want to find out how to be someone else. What we don't do is we don't go inside. So literally turn yourself inside out. Read the book that says, like, like we're writing a book every day of our lives. Every day we're seeing who we are as people. When I was growing up, I, I lied for people to accept me because I didn't accept myself. Mm. So I would make up stories so, so then you would accept me into your world. I would, uh, everything I did was for someone else to like me. It wasn't until I started reading my own book about how pathetic I was as a human being. I could blame my dad, I could blame kids at school. I could blame having health issues, ADD, my mom not being around. Great mom, but she was doing her thing. Right. I could blame a lot of people. And that's the book I was reading. And I put it off on everybody else. It wasn't until I said, you know what? For me to fix this, I gotta read what the hell, what the fuck is wrong with David Goggins? Not, not blame anybody. Read my book and say, okay, I'm afraid of my shadow. How can I overcome that? Go in the military, get your ass kicked, do things you hate to do. Be uncomfortable every day of your life. Roger that. I'm not the smartest kid in the world. Okay, instead of somebody saying, oh no, you're smart. No, no, don't say that to yourself. I said to myself, no, I'm a dumb Roger that. How you get smarter? Educate yourself. So the things that we run from, we run from the truth. We're running from the truth, man. So the only way I became successful was going towards the truth. As painful and as brutal as it is, it changed me. It, it allowed me to become, in my own right, who I am today. It's easy to get caught up in doubts and fears, but remember, you have everything you need within you to succeed. Believe in your abilities, trust your instincts, and don't let setbacks define you. Every challenge is an opportunity to learn and grow stronger. Keep pushing forward because greatness lies within you. As far back as I can remember, I craved a seat at the table. Even when I was a punk-ass teenager, I knew that one day I wanted to sit at that mythical table among the greats in my field. I suppose you can trace it back to a deep desire for respectability. I desperately wanted to be somebody because I felt like a nobody. That's why I was drawn towards special ops at such a young age. And when I realized I was flunking out of school, why I was so motivated to change. I knew that I would never arrive at that table unless I took myself and my life more seriously. And yet, as much as I wanted to be among the greats, the decision makers, the anointed ones, I spent years waiting for a formal invitation. I don't know how many times I visualized receiving that embossed golden ticket to the dinner I dreamed of, where steak and lobster tail would be served by those who admired and wanted to be near us. But I expected to have to prove something first. I figured if I inserted myself into the proper organization or structure and met the standard consistently, Someone would notice me, a mentor or guide, and give me directions to where all the power players gathered. I was not looking to be at the head of their table. I wasn't delusional. I just wanted a seat. In the meantime, I became one of the waiters who served the elite. Before long, some of my peers, who in my mind weren't as qualified as I was, were seated at the table too. I sucked it up and served them, still hoping that one day I'd be tapped on the shoulder and someone would pull out a chair for me. I wanted so badly to be anointed and validated by my superiors. I wanted to be told, you have finally arrived, David Goggins. You are now recognized to be one of the best. Trouble is, that formal invitation rarely arrives. And for me, it never did. But while I waited, I observed my so-called superiors at close range. I watched them work, studied how they presented themselves, and realized that most of them were fairly common mother and I wanted to be uncommon because it is the uncommon story, the uncommon leader that inspires others to seek more of themselves, work harder, and rise to the occasion. It's no secret that the vast majority of people prefer to be led because it's easier to follow someone else than to break your own trail. Yet all too often, we are led by bosses, teachers, coaches, and powerful officials who wear the rank and title and deploy optimistic speeches, management lingo, and strategies they learned in some university or seminar from their colleagues at that table in the executive suite, but do not inspire us. Perhaps it's because they talk way too much and do far too little. Maybe it's because their own lives are out of control. Whatever the case, over time, it becomes obvious that these men and women who we once admired from afar don't have what it takes to lead themselves, let alone anyone else. Yet when they reject or ignore us, we allow that to limit us 
and our ability to influence the organization we belong to and the people around us. It doesn't have to be that way. Too many people mistake leadership for what happens at the top, in the spotlight, around that mythical table when some of the most powerful leaders are hard at work in the shadows. They know that opportunities to make a difference in the lives of their neighbors, family, co-workers, and friends are ever present. They wield massive influence without having to say much, if anything at all. And the first step in becoming one of these unsung heroes is learning how to become a self-leader. And I was a kid who kind of got the, kind of like the, the uh, bad genes. I, all these little sickly issues, all these allergic to shit. I was a little sickly kid. It's funny how when people hear my story now, they want to put a title on me. Like, um, I'm superhuman. And I love it because basically it makes you feel better by putting a title on me. Right. You can do it too. And so basically- It's a choice. Yeah, it's a choice. Yeah. It's, it's a horrible choice. Right. It's a hard choice. It's a lot of suffering involved. Yeah. So for me to get the start line, through that start line journey, I realized I'm capable. Mm -hmm. So what happens through this whole process is the change of the mind. Mm -hmm. It's a change of the guard. Mm -hmm. Someone once owned my brain. I never owned it. Yeah. I never had no, I had no you, control. You outsourced it. Yes, right. Everybody had it. It was my dad's fault. It was the kids that called me fault. My mom wasn't home fault. My soon-to-be stepdad's fault. The little kid that gave me about the bus fault. My life was, everybody had a piece of my brain. Yeah. And through this journey of suffering, and the suffering I put it in, because I started finding myself. Yeah. And I started, oh no, I'm taking this back from me. This part of my brain is mine now. And I started puzzling back this piece of my brain. And through that, I grew confidence. Challenges are not roadblocks. They are stepping stones to success. Embrace them with open arms, for they are the catalysts of growth and transformation. When faced with a challenge, don't shrink back. Instead, stand tall and face it head on. You have the strength, the resilience, and the determination to overcome anything that stands in your way. Let challenges be the fuel that propels you toward your dreams. I'd learned how to hold myself accountable, and I knew I could take a man's soul in the heat of battle. I had overcome many obstacles and realized that each of those experiences had calloused my mind so thick I could take on any challenge. All of that had made me feel like I dealt with my past demons, but I hadn't. I'd been ignoring them. My memories of abuse at the hands of my father, of all those people who called me, didn't vaporize after a few victories. Those moments were anchored deep in my subconscious. And as a result, my foundation was cracked. In a human being, your character is your foundation. And when you build a bunch of successes and pile up even more failures on a f***ed up foundation, the structure that is the self won't be sound. To develop an armored mind, a mindset so callous and hard that it becomes bulletproof. You need to go to the source of all your fears and insecurities. Most of us sweep our failures and evil secrets under the rug, but when we run into problems, that rug gets lifted up and our darkness re-emerges, floods our soul, and influences the decisions which determine our character. My fears were never just about the water and my anxieties toward class 235 weren't about the pain of first phase. They were seeping from the infected wounds I've been walking around my entire life, and my denial of them amounted to a denial of myself. I was my own worst enemy. It wasn't the world or God or the devil that was out to get me. It was me. I was rejecting my past and therefore rejecting myself. My foundation, my character was defined by self-rejection. All my fears came from that deep-seated uneasiness I carried with being David Goggins because of what I'd gone through. Even after I'd reached a point where I no longer cared about what others thought of me, I still had trouble accepting me. Anyone who is of sound mind and body can sit down and think of 20 things in their life that could have gone differently, where maybe they didn't get a fair shake and where they took the path of least resistance. If you're one of the few who acknowledge that, want to callous those wounds and strengthen your character, it's up to you to go back through your past and make peace with yourself by facing those incidents and all of your negative influences and accepting them as weak spots in your own character. Only when you identify and accept your weaknesses will you finally stop running from your past. Then those incidents can be used more efficiently as fuel to become better and grow stronger. Right there on mom's couch, as the moon burned its arc in the night sky, I faced down my demons. I faced myself. I couldn't run from my dad and I had to accept that he was part of me and that his lying, cheating character influenced me 
more than I cared to admit. Before that night, I used to tell people that my father had died rather than tell the truth about where I came from. Even in the seals, I trotted out that lot. I knew why. When you get beat up, you don't want to acknowledge getting your ass kicked. It doesn't make you feel very manly. So the easiest thing to do is forget about it and move on. Pretend it never happened. Not anymore. Going forward, it became very important for me to rehash my life. Because when you examine your experiences with a fine-tooth comb and see where your issues come from, you can find strength in enduring pain and abuse. By accepting Trunus Goggins as part of me, I was free to use where I came from as fuel. I realized that each episode of child abuse that could have killed me made me tough as hell and as sharp as a samurai's blade. Success doesn't come to those who wait. It comes to those who work tirelessly, day in and day out toward their goals. Stay persistent, even when the journey gets tough. Remember, every step you take brings you closer to your dreams. Don't be discouraged by slow progress or temporary setbacks. Keep moving forward, and eventually you'll reach your destination. Your persistence will be rewarded with success beyond your wildest dreams. I hate to say it, the best way for me to get how I feel across, I can't sit here and say, you know what, yeah, I went through Hell Weekend, man, it was really hard. No, that takes your damn soul, rips it inside out, and then they say, now we're going to start. It, it, it allows me to express where I was at at a point of my life. If I don't give you all of me, why the hell am I here? How will you learn from me? People take so much offense to me. You will never learn from people if we always tap dance around the truth. We tap dance around the truth by finding the right words so I don't hurt you because you have thin skin. No, tighten up, people. It's okay. Trust me. It's okay. You might be called one day. It's okay. You might be called some Jewish word or some good or gay word. It's okay. Let them call you that. What are you going to do now? They don't own your life. How are you going to control that now? How are you going to flip it upside down and say, Roger that, now I'm going to harness this and you'll read about me years from now? How? That's the question. How are you going to do that? Thicken your skin. Become more of a human being. Don't be afraid of the reflection in the mirror because that's all you can be afraid of. Once you overcome the reflection in the mirror, you've done it. Nothing in my life has ever happened for me on the first try. It took me three cracks to get through Navy SEAL training. I had to take the ab at five times and fail twice before breaking the Guinness World Record for most pull-ups in 24 hours. But by then, failure had long since been neutralized. When I set an unreasonable goal and fall short, I don't even look at it as failure anymore. It is simply my first, second, third, or tenth attempt. That is what belief does for you. It takes failure out of the equation completely because you go in knowing the process will be long and arduous. And that is what the we do. I wish I could more fully express what it's like to defy the medical mind to parachute into wildfires at 47 years old. I find the sensation almost impossible to describe. All I can say is that I hope you and everyone else get to feel this one day because to overcome all obstacles and bump up against the outer reaches of your capabilities is the pinnacle in those rare fleeting moments when you are washed in the sense of infinite possibility and overwhelmed with glory everything they ever did to you or put in front of you all the knockdowns breakdowns and fuse and every bit of the pain doubt and humiliation is and worth it. But the only way to get there is to continually seek greatness and always be willing to try one more time. I never needed to be the hardest motherfucker in the world. That became a goal because I knew it would bring out my best self, which is what this fucked up world needs from all of us, to evolve into the very best versions of ourselves. That's a moving target, and it isn't a one-time task. It is a lifelong quest for more knowledge, more courage, more humility, and more belief. Because when you summon the strength and discipline, to live like that, the only thing limiting your horizons is you. Life begins at the end of your comfort zone. Don't be afraid to take risks, to challenge the status quo, or to pursue your passions with everything you've got. Comfort may feel safe, but it's in moments of discomfort that you truly discover your strength and potential. So, dare to dream big, dare to fail, and dare to get back up again. Remember, the greatest rewards often come from the greatest risks. Choose courage and watch as your life transforms before your eyes.